Okay, this is your missionary ambassador in Kenya, Beverly Captain Simeon. I am now married to a Kenyan man who is my interpreter here, and so he's also a missionary. Hallelujah. And I just um, have such a huge report to give, I can never give it in just one time. But I have been here uh, for over two years. I only came for three months, and I have never returned to the United States yet. God hasn't opened that door, but he has opened so many doors of ministry here that it is just mind-blowing. And um, this last Sunday, actually yesterday, we traveled quite a little distance to go to a small new church. It's called Hallelujah Church, and it has lots of young people in it. And, of course, the, the young people are they are the future because when the older people are gone the young people are going to have to step up and take over but um, what is exciting is that here in Kenya people are so hungry for God they're hungry for the truth and so many churches that we go into the pastors the bishops they're not preaching the truth and People have been so blinded for centuries in Kenya. Satan has kept them blinded spiritually because he doesn't want them to hear the truth because there are so many, um, so many different types of unknown sins because of their culture that the people don't know that they're sinning. Satan does and he wants to keep it that way so that they don't know but when we preach the gospel we preach salvation we preach deliverance from all curses forever and we preach holiness without which no man should see the lord and that is scripture and the holiness is what so many of the pastors are not preaching even pentecostal churches are not preaching on holiness they are preaching more about the um, um, financial um, good things and prosperity preaching that is prosperity for all the all the tangible things it's not teaching prosperous prosperity like scripture said may you prosper as your soul prospers but so many people have taken that out of context and they forget the part, may you prosper as your soul's prospering. They're more interested in getting the things, the money, the houses, the cars, all of that, the beautiful clothing. Um, that's what they're being taught in so many of the churches. They're not being taught that without holiness, they're not going to see the Lord. And so, that is, that is one of the key things uh, that God has me preaching. And uh, everywhere we go, I don't think there's maybe only been one church where everybody had already been delivered. But other than that, somebody, whether it's one, two, five, ten, twenty, people will be truly saved and delivered when we go to these churches and preach. And... I, I tell you, it is so exciting to see the hunger on people's faces. And when I give an altar call and they come forward for repentance and for deliverance, to see these people, because they're, they are serious. They want to be delivered. They don't want to have a known sin in their life. And so God is moving here in Kenya. Um, I am totally, my mind's just totally blown on the things that God has accomplished in less than two years, there have been thousands of Kenyans that have been truly saved and delivered from all curses. To me, that is not a small number. When you look at these huge mega churches, that's just a real small number. But to me, this is not a small number. And there are many bishops and pastors who have come into that line for repentance and deliverance. And when I see that happen, they, they have 
they have kicked their pride to the curb and they have admitted that yes they haven't invested in their life and to see them come forward to repent along with everybody else that is so exciting to me because every time we go satan loses big time he loses and he just doesn't lose for a day or two he loses people he loses them forever because I teach them then how they can keep the victory over Satan and every demon from hell. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, there is, there, this is a wide open mission field for people to come and preach the true gospel, not a fake gospel, not a pretend gospel. I better be careful. Long with it. But um, I just want to this radio station to know that even though I haven't been able to connect before, I am so grateful, Josh, that you that you picked up today. I am so grateful because the souls that are being affected here, it's just it's just mind boggling. People who think that everything is good with them and God, and then when they start hearing truth that they've never heard before, they just, they know them, they have to make a change, they have to make a choice, and it's their choice, it's no one else, that they have to make a choice for themselves, and that choice is going to affect where they spend eternity, Agreed. and so this is the, I need to be on this end, uh, like I say, God is opening up doors for us that I would not have dreamed of uh, in March. Uh, March the 11th through the 17th, we are to be in Rwanda to uh, preach at a leadership conference uh, all of those days, and we'll be uh, we'll be driving from Kenya into Uganda, and then on into Rwanda, and planning then on coming back through Uganda again. And um, so, I I posted a thing on Facebook today, uh, ask telling people that we need to raise 2500 US dollars for this trip because we don't have that money, but God does. God's the owner of all of it. And I believe that he is going to bring forth the funds that are, that are going to be needed for this trip. We've never been invited there before. We've also been invited to go to Burundi. We thought we were going to get to go on this trip, but I think it's probably just going to be the two countries this this first initial trip. But then after that, there will be there will be more conferences to do. Um, this evening, even here, um, a man, a pastor from Pakistan, has contacted me and wants at some time this year to come to Pakistan to do revivals and to do a leadership conference. Um, doors are opening all over. This just, it just blows my mind. And the name of this ministry that God has placed Jacob and I into is Global Deliverance Ministry. We now have a website, which is www.gdministry.com. So it's www. G is in George, D is in David, ministry. dot com. That's and ministry or ministries. There, our our, ad, our address is there, um, and very ways that people can help to support this ministry. Um, I I think that a lot of people in the United States when I came to Kenya in the first place. I think they thought, well, I was just coming for three months, but I think they had the opinion that I was coming to Kenya and was going to have a good time. I was going to go on a safari and have a lot of fun, and then I'd come back to the U.S., and that would be that. Well, that's not how things worked at all. I had no idea that when I came, I would not be going back for a very long time. I had no idea of that. But I am totally 100% sold out to God for him to use me wherever, whenever, and however he chooses. And I know that this is where I belong. I'm right in the center of God's will for me. And I know that the doors are going to continue to open. And souls are going to continue to be saved and delivered. 
you know, Josh, so many times people don't want to go into the streets. They don't want to support someone who is actually on the ground. They are on the front line doing the work. But, you know, God has his faithful one, the faithful ones, who will get past the fact that I was nobody that was known. I'm not anybody important now. I'm just a vessel for God's use, however he wants to use me. And I know that this ministry is going to be, it is already global because um, here, oh, it's been several months ago now, I was doing a live video in the evening with some people in Oklahoma that are friends of mine that had never even heard that they could ever be delivered from all the curses. And that couple prayed repentance and for deliverance and were delivered over the live video that night. Mm. We have seen already seven people that were delivered, seven men delivered in Burundi just outside the airport building and still on airport grounds that were truly saved and delivered. And then I prophesied over the five young men. God is on the move here. And I'm so excited because it's not me doing this. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. It's not me. I'm just willing to be used. And i that's what it takes is for someone to be willing to put their will down on the altar and let God have his will and his way with you. And so anyway, I thank you for allowing me to give even a small report. Um, it's exciting here. You cannot put a dollar value on one soul to be saved from an eternity in hell. There's no, no amount of money that, would, that you could name that would be the worth of just one soul. So I'm here, and, and I'm just doing what God wants me to do. And my husband stands beside of me, and he preaches right along with me. And thank God that he gave him to me because he can interpret very well. And he knows English very well, as well as Swahili. And so everyone that hears this broadcast, I pray blessings upon you. And if you don't know Jesus already as your personal Lord and Savior, oh, I pray that God will give you conviction, that you will repent of your sins, that you will accept Jesus Christ. Because without him, without Jesus, we're all lost. Without Jesus, it's all about him. It's all about Jesus and following in his steps that he wants us to take. So Josh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And I hope that in the future we can do this again.